Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to just be trying on some of the newer makeup that I've been wanting to test out. And the star of the show today is going to be the new Melt Cosmetics palette because I got so many requests to review this. So I'm going to be giving you my first impressions on this and we'll kind of see how this works out for me. So if you're interested in that, then just keep watching. First and foremost, today's video is very kindly sponsored by Ana Luisa. I worked with them many times before because they are one of my go-to places for good quality dainty jewelry. And I'm really excited to be a part of their Mother's Day campaign because I love my mom. <laughs> <laughs> and these pieces are a fantastic gift for yourself, for your mom, or for anybody that you love. Now, this sale started on April 12th, so it is currently going on. So when you shop through the link in the description box, it will save you 15% off of all of their jewelry pieces. Last day to guarantee standard shipping for May 9th for the US is going to be May 5th. For international is going to be May 3rd, so just keep that in mind. Obviously, you guys know I'm obsessed with my mom. We have very similar tastes in a lot of things, so I just know she would love these pieces. Mother's Day is a time to, of course, give your mom a gift that she's going to love and have forever, hopefully. So I'm going to show you three of the pieces that I recently picked up and, oh my gosh, you guys, I think this is my favorite batch of items that I've gotten. Um, if you don't know, they all come in really nice pouches. Depending on the collection you get, they're going to come in different bags, but I've been wearing these a lot lately. So these are the first earrings that I have. You have these beautiful kind of diamondy style hoops. Very, very unique. I really love it. Let me get close up. This has been one of my go-to pieces to wear. Uh, it goes with literally everything. There's also this matching set. So this is a matching set of two necklaces and they layer so well together and tell me that these two don't go perfectly together. The other pair that I have, and this one is so beautiful, you guys. I think this is one of my favorite pieces from Ana Luisa ever. They are these Huggies with a chain, and it's a way to get the very trendy Huggy earring in, but you also have that gorgeous chain kind of hanging from it. So anyways, I'm obsessed with the pieces that I got, so I recommend specifically the ones that I got because they're so dainty, but they're also so unique. Now, if you're new to Ana Luisa, their pieces range from $39 to higher. There's pieces and something for everybody based on your budget. And if this is important to you, the company also has a sustainable mission where they are carbon neutral and they make their batches in limited quantities to ensure good quality. Many of you have asked me about their quality. I have been wearing their jewelry for a year now and I have not had a single piece break. They've really lasted a long time. I shower with them, which is something I'm not very proud to admit, but I haven't noticed any change in the quality, so I, I just completely stand by the brand. So again, make sure if you are interested in getting 15% off that you shop at the discount link down below. Without further ado, let's get into the video. By the way, on my eyebrows, I used the Kaja eyebrow pencils. I used the pencil and the clear brow gel and those are definitely like my new favorite brow products. They're amazing. I just, I had a wedding this morning, so I did my eyebrows and my eye makeup since I was wearing a mask and I took the eye makeup off and I was like, mm, the brows are done. I'll just leave them. It takes too long anyways. So let's start off with primer. This is not new, but it's the primer that I need for the foundation that I'm trying. I want something hydrating and smoothing, so I'm going to use the Gucci Silk Priming Serum. Because I'm using a powder foundation, I want something that's going to be equally moisturizing, but equally smoothing so that the powder foundation can spread smoothly on the skin. I used to like using a gripping primer for powder foundation just because I felt like the powder stuck to it better. <sighs> you also kind of give up being able to smoothly blend the powder over the skin. So lately, even though I still like a nice gripping primer for a powder foundation, lately I've been enjoying something a little bit more silky for the powder to blend over. I really like this primer. I've been liking it even more and more the longer that I've had it. It's just so useful. Okay, powder foundation today. We are using the Ket powder foundation. Now, if you don't know Ket Cosmetics, they're actually more so of a professional makeup brand. Muse Beauty Pro was kind enough to send me their whole line. There's all these shades right here. They sent me a lot of information on this. And funny enough, I actually use these powders in my makeup kit, but I don't use them as powder foundations. I use them just to shade the face, to set the face, just to add a little bit of color, not actually for coverage. And I've never tried these as powder foundations, so that's what I wanna try them out for. I can say they work great, they blend beautifully, they have a nice range of colors to set the face and shade the face, but I'm not sure about powder foundations, so we're gonna try that today. If you are a 
powder foundation fan, you have to try the Isom X57 brush. It is an arm and a leg. I know. Hopefully their customer appreciation sale is going on because I love this. It's a short handled kabuki, but it really applies powder foundation like I've never tried before. So my perfect shade for these powder foundations, I feel like is a mixture between N2 and N4. I could use a little bit more of N2 in the center of my face and then blend it out to N4 or I could mix these together and they would work for me. You know, they say of course to use a sponge to get full full coverage. I'm gonna use my kabuki. I like the coverage that this gives. I like the blend that this gives. If you don't no, these are vegan, cruelty-free, gluten and paraben-free, and I'm trying to see if there's anything notable to mention. Just really that you can use these for touch-ups, foundation, bronzer, and shading. I've used it for all of the above except for foundation, so that's why I want to try these today, but they are so good, you guys. Okay, so I'm going to mix mostly N2, then a little bit of N4, and let's kind of pat it on the nose. And if you're new to my channel, I'm a big fan of powder foundation. I just really love how lightweight powder foundations feel on the skin. Now don't get me wrong, there's something to be said certainly about liquid foundation, but for a quick, easy, everyday, I love a powder foundation. So when I film, I normally don't do powder foundations, but when I go to work or I'm just running out to do errands and I want a nice, even coverage on my skin, I just think powder foundations are so much easier. You don't need to wet your brush or do anything like that. So look at that. So that gave just enough coverage really to even out the skin. Now, like I said, this is my first time using this as a powder foundation. So what I'm noticing from first application is really make sure that your skin is well prepped and hydrated because it is kind of sticking to some of the drier areas around my nose. And I'm really smart, you guys. I forgot to put concealer down first. <laughs> if you're using powder foundation, please put your liquid concealer down first. It also allows you to put extra coverage on those areas that need it with your concealer and then go over with a powder that's going to give the most seamless look. That's okay. We can adjust. Oh, by the way, I'm using the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer in Canal. I use the baby size. I love baby makeup. That'll do. I don't need a ton of concealer today. Maybe just like got this breakout today. Learn from my mistakes. Do the concealer first, but that's all right. That was really, really quick to get a nice coverage on the skin. The only problem with doing my eyebrows first is now I can't. This big brush struggling around the eyebrow area. Obviously, I look pretty one-dimensional and sick right now. So let's do some shading. So I picked out the shade N6. N6 looks like this. We're gonna use this as our bronzer today. Like I said, this is a great powder to use for shading as well. You can see how nice it blends. So depending on what tool you choose to use this for, it will determine how much coverage you give. And now that I'm looking, now this is a little bit too yellow to use for bronze, but that's okay. Since these are black packaging, I didn't want to open anymore. So this will work. This is helping give us a little bit more dimension, but I think probably I'd go with one of the more neutral colors for this step typically. But to be honest, I was feeling a little lazy today. So I opened the first one and I was like, this will do <laughs> for bronzer. And here's what it's looking like on the skin. I don't know that this is my favorite powder foundation in the world, but uh, I can certainly recommend these from a makeup artist standpoint. These are beautiful powders to use for correcting, shading, highlighting, and setting. So I think I still prefer these for that purpose. I know I need to do a makeup kit tour. I will one day, I promise. Probably the summer when I don't have a full-time job, I'll get to it. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do? Really quickly, I'm gonna take some of N2. I'm just gonna set my under eyes. I had a wedding this morning and I used one of these powders to set the under eyes and it just blurred everything. Do you see how pretty that sets the eyes? Oh, this is so beautiful. So yeah, after today I've decided I definitely prefer these for how I've been using them. As powder foundation, I do think they might be a bit dry on the skin unless your skin is very, very hydrated. And I think with wear, this will probably look better as well. But this collection of powders, beautiful to set and shade the face. Like, do you see how much nicer my under eyes look just from patting that powder under there? All right, anyways, let's throw on some blush. 
If you watched my most recent Sephora haul, I picked up the Laura Mercier blush in Passion Fruit, and look how beautiful this blush is. It's just so light and so natural. It has such a pretty sheen to it. You can't apply it too much, which is nice. This particular color is really great if you're more on the fair side because it's not too intimidating. I do find though that this probably goes better over a liquid foundation as opposed to a powder foundation, but that's okay. We'll just build it up today. Do you see the gorgeous sheen? But that added to the skin, so pretty. I love it. This blush, I wanna get more colors. It's a beautiful formula. And then for highlight, Maven Beauty sent me a PR package and I've been testing their stuff out and I'm really, really impressed so far. I still need to try their eyeshadows, but their highlights are awesome. So this is a shade draped up and here's what the packaging looks like. I'm just gonna put just a little bit. Look how beautifully that blends into the skin. These are made in Canada, you guys. They're so pretty. Look at that. Glazed, smoothed, so pretty. All right, let's get into the reason that I know you guys are all here, let's be honest. So, <clears throat> Melt Cosmetics released this palette, and if you watch my haul, you know I feel really silly about <laughs> talking about this palette. No judgment, of course, I really don't care about the theme, but it's a bit overdone by Melt, and if you guys don't know, like I, I'm an elementary school PE teacher, PE and health teacher, so, I feel rather unprofessional talking about a palette with this theme and I would not have picked this palette up or talked about it if the color story wasn't so dang pretty. So it also was just so highly requested for me to review. So that's what we're gonna do. I haven't tried this palette yet. I've swatched it though. And here's what I can say about the swatches. One word, chunky very chunky. Especially, specifically, the two shades on the end. I'll show you. I like press hard, and this is what I get. Let me do the other one. And this one, in particular, is chunky. Ugh. 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 Yeah, so I will say, though, those are the only two shades that really feel extra chunky with no payoff. <laughs> We're mowing. I'm just gonna pretend like that's not happening. Uh, but some of the shimmers, they felt so much better than that, but they still were all a little bit chunky. So I'm just gonna put them on my eyes before I get too judgmental here because that's the main point, right? So we're gonna go with this shade right here. This is a refer number 27 brush, by the way. Like this shade, perfect. I cannot say anything bad about this shade. Now we'll go into the deeper matte now. True test here. I'm gonna start off with this shade right here and then go to this darkest shade. So here's the second to deepest brown. I love these tones of neutrals. Keeping it so neutral is just so pretty and like subtly smoky. You know, because of the neutral undertone, you can get a really smoky eye without it actually being black. I'm gonna run some of that along the lower lash line. And then I'm gonna go in with the deepest shade right now. So this is the deepest right here. And we're gonna pat her in. Okay, so straight up, the mattes are popping. They're really, really good. I really enjoy the colors. Now, are they amazing, unique colors? No, but they blend it really nice. They have a great level of pigmentation and they're pretty easy to work with. But again, like I said, I was pretty concerned about the shimmers. So we'll start off with this one right here. Okay, this one is rather chunky the first time I swatched it. it. It just requires some pressing in to make sure you don't get a lot of fallout. Like you can see, you wanna press it in. I can't see this working very well with a brush, but that's okay, that's not abnormal. So I'm gonna take some of it. It's just, it's messy. Look at this. It's a messy shade. You see that, those loose particles coming? So you might want to like do your face makeup after you do your eyes. But I will say, this shade is really pretty, but I don't know if you can see, but it's not quite settling onto the lid. It's just like sitting there, ready to fall all over your face. So you see, I'm really working it out, pressing it in. I think glitter glue would solve the sitch, but why? For this, like, you see that, right? Oh, okay, it's chunky on the lid, dude. I give it the benefit of the doubt because this shade is stunning, but I have to like make sure this doesn't get all over my face. Let me get those particles off. I really wanna like this palette. I know you guys asked me, I've had a few comments, like if you know you don't like the Melt palettes, why do you keep buying them? One, because I'm a review channel and you guys ask. Two, because they've come out with good palettes. They're just inconsistent, so that's why I have a review channel to tell you if this one is the good one 
or the bad one, all right? It's not about me. <laughs> and three, because this color story was so pretty because I was going to pass on this. You just want to give Mel a chance because their color stories are always banging. But then you get disappointed because the quality is not. Okay, so that shade was kind of a mess. It's stunning, but it's a mess. Now we're gonna go in with Bow, which is that chocolate brown. I'm gonna apply that to the lower lash line because I wanna try one of those shades that I did not like. This shade seems pretty smooth and when I swatched it, it, it felt the best of all the shimmers. So like that shade's really nice and it's not chunky like the others. We like that one. Now, like I said, I was having problems with these two shades, but benefit of the doubt, we're gonna go in with the first shade right here. Cause I wanna open up my eyes. And you know what? I'm much more impressed with how this works on the eyelid than when I swatched it. So that gives me a little bit of hope. Yeah, that's not really, that's not that bad. It's swatched bad, but it's not a bad color. But I got a pretty look out of this palette, which I knew I would, no matter how bad or good the quality was, the color stories are just so good that you would definitely be able to get a pretty look. Pretty and grungy with this palette. Unfortunately, I only have two eyeballs and so much lid space, so I have to stop there. I can't test all of the colors today for you. Uh, but this palette's kind of messy. I'm taking a little bit of this shade right here. When you swatch it, oof, it's chunky, expect fallout on your face. Please do your face makeup afterwards. Some of the shades are smooth, some of them are not. So the mattes in this palette are really good, but shimmers are inconsistent. The colors themselves really gorgeous, but there's at least three of the six shimmers that I tried today are very, very messy. So I don't really recommend this palette based on today's use just because you pay so much. Like Melt palettes are not cheap, you guys. They're almost the same price as Natasha Denona palettes. That's the thing where if this was like $40, I could say, you know what? If you like the color story, go for it. But this is in the $60 price range. Get the Natasha Denona Glam instead. It will be so much more user-friendly. This isn't gonna be a palette that I return because straight up, you guys, I just love the color story of this. I think it's really, really pretty, but I'm definitely gonna have to make some adjustments adjustments to make this palette work for me. That said on this palette, I really wanted to like it. If you are into Melt Cosmetics palette, the best one that I've tried so far is the She's and Parties. The quality on that, phenomenal. Amazing. Love it. This one is not the worst that I've had. Like this is better than Millennial Pinks, but it's, it's not a good palette for the price. So yeah. All right, guys. I'm gonna do uh, some liner and lashes and then we'll be back with some lips. I'll be right back. All right guys, with lashes, oh, I really like your look. <gasps> I do. Anyways, let's move on to lips. So Wonder Beauty came out with some new lip products. They made a collaboration with Catherine Zeta-Jones and they came out with this lip pencil in the shade Primrose that I'm gonna try out. So they did send this to me. I've been curious about this line. Ever since I got it, I've been really excited to try it. So we're just gonna put the lip liner on. Almost identical to my natural lip color. I do have relatively pigmented lips though. So if you don't have pigmented lips, this might not be a perfect match for you, but pretty dang close for me. Okay, I know it doesn't really go perfectly with my lips, but I didn't have a brand new lip color that was super cool toned. So that this is just what we're doing today. And then I have a Wonder Beauty lipstick also in the shade Needed Nude. And it works perfectly on top. I think I've tried this before on camera. I have a pretty nice lip formula. Pretty, I like it. Make it like a cooler toned gloss though because I think that might make everything fit together well. Don't hate me, this is no longer sold. <laughs> <laughs> but this is from Bite Beauty. This is flat white. It's an older gloss, but it's just what this lip look needs, so I'm sorry. Honestly, this is probably expired. It doesn't smell as good as it used to. It used to have this really nice light coffee scent. So this one actually is old, but... <clears throat> Ugh. Yeah, I'm throwing this away after today. Not nice. I mean, but anyways... Here is the final look. So of all the products that I use today, the powder foundation, I much prefer it, you know, in lighter quantities as far as building it up as powder foundation. I definitely think a liquid layer or something down first 
looks better uh, because this is looking a bit dry on my skin. But if you use it to set, it's very smoothing. They have awesome colors, all of that good stuff. Uh, I love the blush. I love the highlight. The eyeshadow palette, while I do really love the look, it's because I just love the color story of this, but it may or may not be a journey to get to the look that you want. You just need to be patient, work slowly, glitter glue, eyes first, all of that, and you will definitely get this palette to work because the mattes are really nice. It's just a little bit messy, so I don't recommend it. I think you should get the Natasha Denona Glam Palette before you get this, honestly. It, the palette itself is a huge mess now because there's just chunks everywhere, but it does create a pretty look that I'm not going to lie about. And um, I have never worn a Wonder 2 lip liner before, but I really like this color, this shade Primrose. It's brand new. It's a great everyday neutral lip color. And Wonder Beauty has a beautiful powder foundation as well. Their lipsticks are really nice. Those are the products that I enjoy from the brand. So yeah, that's all I have. Thank you guys so much for getting ready with me. Of course, I was most excited to try this out for you guys to give you my thoughts. Now, these aren't my final thoughts. Stay tuned until next month when I do my monthly palette rankings videos. I'm going to use this a few times more and then you'll get my final thoughts after using it a few times. Yeah, again, thank you to Ana Luisa's for sponsoring today's video. Remember to click the link in the description box if you would like to get 15% off. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. I will see you all in the next one. Bye!